unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for our second year. This is two years. Only. Somebody clap for Jesus. Tell you anyway, this is just the second year. Turn to the other neighbor and tell him also, this is just the second year. Turn to the other neighbor behind and tell him, this is just the second year. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We want to thank God for two years. Two years of ministry. A hundred summons. Hallelujah. This is just a hundred summons. Something is going to happen in a few minutes. In a few minutes. So I need to have you sober now. Because in a few, something is going to happen. If it happens to your neighbor while we are preaching, just mind your business and watch them drink, okay? Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13. The Bible says, For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, somebody said we received the word of God, which you heard of us. The Bible says you received it not as the word of men, which effectually worketh also in you that what? That believe. Somebody say amen. Somebody say the word worketh in me, because I'm a believer. Hallelujah. Give me the amplified of that. The Amplified says, and we also especially thank God continually for this, that when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who are believe. And what does it do? It exercises superhuman power in those who adhere and trust and rely on it. That word, the Bible says, it exercises superhuman power. Superhuman power to those that believe in it. Hallelujah. 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 One time somebody called me and they told me, Apostle, my mom has been in a coma for three months. This was three months. And the lady was in the UK. And she told me, but we don't know what to do. Because we've done everything we can. We've made every kind of prayer we can. And we felt like nothing is happening. She was in a coma, three months. And on the phone I told her, this was on phone, I told her, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I sent forth the word of God, which cannot be limited by proximity, to touch that woman in the bed, and that she would wake up in the name of Jesus. The woman said amen and hung up. After about 15 minutes, the mother woke up. Even if you don't clap. <laughs> the Bible says it works. It exercises superhuman power. Hallelujah. Say that's what's working in me. You say that's what is working in the inside of me. Power. <laughs> Listen. The Lord spoke to me about the third year that we're entering into and the end of the two years that we're in now. And I asked the Lord, what are we entering into? And I had two words, experience upon experience. And the guys, they were asking me for the theme for many weeks. And for some reason I was not answering because I had not heard. And I didn't just want to put something there because I wanted to put there. But I wanted to put something there because the Lord had spoken of a transition that we're entering. 
as a ministry, as a nation, as a church. And he told me experience upon experience. And many of you have been seeing that word, experience upon experience. But I recall that many of you have not been understanding the full extent of what it means to carry experience. Now I'm starting to preach. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that to everything, the Bible says there is a what? A season. And a time to every purpose on the earth. In other words, for God to purpose anything in the earth, He has to function by the principle of season and time. The season is general. Time is personal. Hallelujah. When you read the Hebrew word there for time, it is experiences. In other words, that to everything there is a season and experiences to every purpose under the earth. God cannot purpose in a man with whom he has not had experiences with. Somebody say amen. So every experience precedes every purpose. If God wants to use you to heal the sick, he will create an experience in your life. Hallelujah. You don't necessarily need to be sick. No. But he will create an experience. And what is an experience? An experience is an actual occasion that happens in the knowledge of an individual to whom it happens to. You cannot say that I had an experience that I didn't know what was happening. When you have an experience, you know what is happening. Experiences, are, of course, when men speak about experiences, we speak about past events, right? But with future implications. Hallelujah. Now, when you speak about experiences, many people think I'm talking about experimentation. I'm not talking about experimentation, because experimentation is when you get at a hypothetical entity. Why? Put it there and test it to prove it against anything else. And then out of there you develop a theory. Experiences are not limited to what has been invented. Experiences are bigger than that. And that is why the Bible says that what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not entered into the heart of a man, the Bible says God has prepared it for them that love him. When you talk about experimentation, you don't respect what is past and what is going to come in the future. When you talk about experiences, you respect that certain things are going to come and override even your revelation of what you think is to a point where something new is formed up in your life and you develop another theory. Somebody say amen. Men built temples for 42 years. And a man brought another version. And he said, break it down for three days. And I will rebuild it. And they say, how can you rebuild a temple that we have built it for 42 years? What is the meaning of the number 40? Trial. What is the meaning of number 2? The testations of two extremes of life. That is now, if you're talking about the dispensation of the New Testament and the Old, they say that we've partaken of both entities. In the trials of faith. For as far as a man can ever go. But this man is telling us. That he can do in three days. What we have tried to do. In 42 years. And they tell him it's impossible. And you see the scriptures say. But they knew not. Somebody said they knew not. They knew not. So. We are in a very sensitive season as a country. Very sensitive season as a body of Christ. And therein are the timings of the Spirit for the next move of purpose. But that purpose is going to come with particular experiences. Hallelujah. I said it's going to come with particular experiences. A man can say, for example, that I walk in the Spirit. And indeed the scriptures say, now that you live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit also. It is true. That we're not supposed to be static in the things of the Spirit. Just born again believers, praising and jumping for God and then going back. We're supposed to be have a, having a place where we walk therein. Hallelujah. And it's a known fact that men walk. But I have seen men, and I have read in the scriptures, of men which walked and did not partake of a certain knowledge. 
And this I mean to say, that there is a knowledge in God that no experiences can give, but without which no experience can come. Let me say it again. There is a knowledge in God that no experience can give, but without which no experience can come. And that is the essence of prevenient grace. Prevenient grace is like impulse. How many of you understand impulse? If you get a flat iron, even if it's not plugged in electricity, and you bring it next to somebody, by impulse they'll have a reflex. Right? It's, it's because in them, the human nature, there's an exercise distinction. For you to know that this is danger and you respond to it. Somebody say amen. amen. We, there are certain things that you don't teach. And there are certain things that you learn. Hallelujah. Nobody taught you how to cry. It was a knowledge embedded in your system. Because you are human beings. And it would be a shock when a cow cries like a human being. Because it's not in its nature. To cry like a human being. And that is why Jesus says. That it is given unto you. To know. The mysteries of heaven. We have the divine ability. To know things before they come. In other words. When he speaks of that knowledge. He speaks of an acquaintance of the things that must come. There was a time when things would fall from air. And a man sees a four. A sheep. A a sheep. A four cornered sheep with four-legged animals. And then he comes down. And the Bible says, and he asks the Lord, what is this? But there's going to come a time. When it comes, men know. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Why? Because in the last days, the Bible says, knowledge shall be increased. Some people never ask themselves the question, what if Peter ate? Because the Spirit of God through, spoke to him and told him, kill and eat. What if Peter ate? Hallelujah. The Bible says that when James, Peter, and John, which were the pillars of faith, when they saw the grace which was given unto me, to the uncircumcised, as it was given unto them, to the circumcised, the Bible says that they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. In other words, Peter originally was called for the circumcised, which are the Jews. Is that true? Is that true? Now, the Bible tells us that the Lord uses Peter to open up to the house of Cornelius. And he speaks Christ. And the Bible says and while he yet speak, the spirit of the Lord what? fell on them which had the word. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. That was who? Peter. From that day on, Peter fell in love with the Gentile church. He was not called for it, but he fell in love with it. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that everywhere he went, his shadow went healing the sick. They were laid on the ground, and the sick were healed. And the next thing we know, Peter left Jerusalem. And then he went all through to the highest places of Italy, present. And one time you see in the scriptures, and he's writing and he's saying that the brethren in Rome greet you. But the man, speaking of the brethren in Rome greeting you, was not called for Rome. Hallelujah. Eventually Peter was killed and hung upside down and died. But the Bible is very clear. That he saw glory even in the Gentiles. I have this feeling. And you can correct me but I'll qualify by scripture. I have this feeling. That even though Peter was called for the, for the Jews. There was a grace for him to minister to the Gentiles. And for God to even change his story. Let me explain it. What would have happened... If Peter ate, come on, what would have happened if Peter ate? Because God is not just showing animals on a sheet of clothes. 
He is talking about the dispensation of the mystery which was hid from the ages past and now revealed, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that this grace was only, not only to the Jews, but it was to be extended also to the Gentiles. For the Bible says, for what advantage has the Jew over the Gentile? There is no advantage. Whether you call him Yesu or they call him Yeshua, there is no advantage. That name is not about its pronunciation. That name is about the relationship that you carry when you call upon it. Somebody say, Amen. But the reason why Peter could not have the grace to even minister to them which were uncircumcised was because he did not eat. And I could feel for certain that if Peter had eaten, he would have had a grace both for the Jew and for the Gentile. I don't know who I'm speaking to. I don't know who I'm speaking to. So if Peter would have had the grace both for the Jew and for the Gentile, now is the fulfillment of the scripture that you shall grow into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Healing the sick, casting out devils, and cleansing the lepers. For lo, I am with thee until the end. And there now have I seen that God can call a man for Jews. God can call a man for Gentiles. But if a man is diligent, God can call him both for Jews and for Gentiles. I know that God called you to do business in Uganda. But if you understand this pattern, God can work through you both in Uganda, in Africa, in East Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in all the islands of the world. That's why Paul says, for I can do. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And that's when I realized that God's dream for you is not for the Gentile. Paul, no. He's looking for a faithfulness in the Gentile. But he's not limiting you to the Gentile. If you kill, will you eat? Hallelujah. And when I saw that, I realized that brethren, we are not limited by skin. We are not limited by color. We are not limited by education background. We are not limited by who you married or who married you. You are not limited by the children that you have. You are not even limited by the ministry. That church which you sit in every Sunday. I have come to the realization that God has a dream for every child who is ready to go higher. And that's why the Bible says that the men which walk in the blessing are men which have understood the heights in God. You see, there are certain things you can never see until you are in a certain plane. And that is why I want to prophesy upon your life. Maybe where you are is just a part of what God has placed in the inside of you. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Maybe where you are is just a part. Yes, you're giving a grace to the Gentiles. But there is a necessity of divine purpose that can look for a man which is available. Let me give you an example. God wanted to visit the Gentiles. But there was no man available. Who did he use? Peter. Because he was the available vessel. Now I'm not talking about the availability to reach the uncircumcised. I'm talking about the availability for God to do in you even way beyond what he had planned in your life in the first place. Uh, I don't know who I'm speaking to. Let me tell you saints. God wants to do in you Way far beyond, exceedingly beyond, even what he had planned in your life. Some people think that the plans of God are absolute. No, no, no. That is why there is a place of diligence for every man. He says, for that man shall stand before kings and not before mean men. There is a place for men which want to go deeper. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I'm not talking about your personal business only. I'm talking about every aspect of your life. That God wants to do something in you. And cause the world to understand. That he can anoint you. And even make you faithful. To take up places. 
Certain men were meant to take up. That is why there are houses that you never built. That is why there are vineyards that you never planted. Let me ask you a question. Do you think God is going to waste time on a man who refuses to live on divine purpose because the man has said no? No. There are men which are saying, God, that one doesn't want it. Me, give it to me. The men who are saying that one is playing with it. Me, give it to me. Kill and eat. Tell your neighbor, kill and eat. Tell your neighbor, kill and eat. But it all began with an experience. It began with a what? With an experience. He saw in the spirit. And that was the beginning. And look at the uniqueness of this. In the story, in the testimony of the New Testament dispensation. You don't see power demonstrated in the Gentiles like it was demonstrated on Peter. Because there is something special God gives men who are ready to also play other roles. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. The reason why I'm saying this is simple. We are moving into a time where certain people are wasting time in the things of God. And there are certain people who are too hungry for the same things. Now I'm starting to minister. Ministry is beginning now. There are people here. You're anxious. And the Bible tells us, be anxious about nothing. You're not anxious. Because of the world's issues. You're not anxious because of the problem in the world. No. You're anxious. Because there's something inside you telling you. There's space. There's space. Don't worry, I know who I'm talking to. The Spirit of the Lord tells you every day there is space. God says, I still have many things to do. I'm just looking for certain men which are available. And He says, don't don't lean on what you can do or what I even gave you. That is what I want to tell you today. We are moving in a time where men are going to have things they were not meant to have. Men are going to flow in an anointing they were not meant to flow into. There are men on this ground who are going to enter offices they were not meant to enter. You're going to get jobs you were not meant to get. You're going to get ministries that go even beyond what God had planned originally for your life. Because He says He's ready to do exceedingly, abundantly above that which you dare to ask or seek according to the working power that worketh in Him. Our nation, Uganda, I want to wake up our saints, believers. The opportunity we have as a nation is to reach the world. You might not understand me now, but I see that there are certain men which are sleeping on the job. And the Bible says he's not counted worthy. Who puts down his hands when he has put his hand on the plow? There are men which put hands on the plow and in the middle, they left it and went into vain junglings and ministered questions to the hearts of the hearers rather than godly edification which is after faith. But there are men which see those plows. Those plows are in the ground. And they can still see the field. It is ready and it is white. Listen. God wants to give you something. He had not planned to give you. When I'm talking about experience upon experience. I want you to understand what I'm saying. I'm saying, you're going to enter one thing, and as you're coming out of one, you enter another. And as you're coming out of one, you enter another. And you're going to look back and say, this wasn't mine. It was for another man. It was for another man. 
Some of you are going to start to prophesy. You're going to design in the spirit. Not because you were supposed to. But because you're available. Some of you are going to walk in a healing grace. Like eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. And has not entered the hearts of men. Not because you were supposed to. Maybe you were just an innocent teacher. But there was a need for God to get attention to establish divine purpose. What is falling upon us in this season is bigger than Uganda. It is bigger than Rwanda. It is bigger than Africa. I wish you know what it feels like to walk with something no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and has not sat in the hearts of men, and it sits in the inside of you in the form of revelation. I wish you understand what it means to see things that no eye can see and has seen. And the revelation you carry in your spirit is the total sum of the experiences that you're having. There are people here. What you feel, you have not seen. But inside, there's something digging you up. And it is telling you, yes, it is there. It exists. It is inside you. It is your story. It is your testimony. Don't give up. to redefine ministry the power of God is moving I hope you can receive you are about to redefine our nation ministry is going to change the ministry of Christ in Uganda is going to change it's going to change it's going to change. There's somebody who came on this this you came because maybe you you're believing God for a job. is nothing. Maybe you're believing God for marriage. That is nothing. He's talking about what I has not seen. I didn't come to pray for you for your next friend. I came to believe with you something. That when you look at yourself, you say this was not mine. It was truly meant for another man. How can I preach what I has not seen? How can I minister what he has not heard? How can I say what has not entered the hearts of men? How? How? That is why I know. That is why I know that the next place of ministration is going to be deeper than talk. The Bible says the gospel is not mere talk. But even it is as power. And he said unto me that my speech, the Amplified, was not seen forth in persuasive or enticing words, set forth plausible words of men. He says, but they were in demonstration. He says, my language and message was not set forth in persuasive Possible words of wisdom. But my language and message, he said, was set forth in the demonstration that we don't preach for men to understand us. No. 
we demonstrate and men understand us. The days of debating Jesus are over. They doubt your God, you raise a dead man and then you start to speak. He says, but they were in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Approved by the Spirit and the power of God operating on me. And the Bible says, and staring in the minds of my hearers, the most holy emotions. And thus, persuading them. We're entering a time where we're not going to speak to persuade men. We are going to do things before they hear you. You're going to do things and men will be persuaded. Some of you, it's the glory on your life. It's going to increase the power of God. Oh my God. On your life, it's going to increase. And men will look at you and say, there's something different about you. There's something different about that man. Our ministries are changing. I said our ministries are changing. The Lord told me what men call ministry is about to change. It's about to change. Elijah walked to Elisha and cast his mantle. And that man left his cattle, left his father, left his mother, and did not turn back one a day. What I has not seen, what he has not heard, and what has not entered the hearts of men, the Lord has prepared it. And guess what? We carry its revelation. I feel I carry something. Every time I want to say it, I find myself saying, Romo Sepata. Sore Bakaya Rabakus. The Bible says, In this we grow. That immortality will be swallowed up by the way. That everything that makes you a human being will be swallowed up by everything that makes you a Christ being. For this is the mystery. And this is love made perfect. That we might have confidence on that day. For as he is, as he is, so are we. How is Jesus now? They're not talking about that man who walked in Galilee then. They're talking about that man who died and rose again. That guy is more anointed now. He's more glorified now. The Bible says he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. And for such he became the captain of our salvation. The Bible says that we gather the same mind which was in him. Who found it no robbery to be like God. But even humbled himself even as unto the cross. And for such he was given a name. Above every name. That at the sound of that name. Every knee bows. And every tongue confesses. That Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of the Father. And he says as he is. So are we. Saints. The world to come is ours. The economies to come are ours. The institutions to come are ours. Everything men are setting up now. It is for you and I. Stop just believing for rent. Creation is groaning for the manifestation of the true, the true sons of God. Sometimes it just dies in rain. It rains because it's calling you. Sometimes the sun just doesn't shine. It shines because it is telling you something. Sometimes earthquakes just don't fall. The Bible says that the foundations of the world are out of course. For they neither know knowledge or have understanding. And I have said that ye are gods. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. From today, 
Expect visions like you've never had. Expect revelation like you've never had. Expect miracles like you've never had. Expect power like you've never had. The Spirit of God has told me to stop speaking. He tells me he wants to minister. Wherever you are, just receive power. 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 The Spirit of God is here. The Spirit of God is here. Some of you are about to receive something you have never seen, no experience. Don't be troubled by power. Just speak to your God. Somebody speak in other tongues. I feel disease is already leaving. Somebody with a fibroid. It's getting out. This is just the beginning of great days. The Bible says that my heart is indicting a good matter. It's indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made concerning touching the king. And he says that now my tongue is as a pen of a ready writer. Don't receive rent. Receive something that will never make you think about rent anymore. You are here moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, speak in other tongues. You are here. Touching every heart. I worship you. Ooh, I worship you. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light of the darkness, but it's who you were. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Tell them, but give me something. Come on, speak to God. I 
right now, God opens your eyes and your ears. You're going to start to see and hear. Men will say that you had a rumor. Some will say it was told you. Wherever you are. Receive it. The other group of people. The Bible says how God wrote special miracles by Paul. But even handkerchiefs and aprons that touched him. Put on the sick and them which were possessed. They were delivered and healed. I saw a grace of special miracles. And Paul's experiences are not even your standard. Start to receive it now. Say it is mine. Jesus has 
as your personal Lord and Savior, there is no better opportunity than now. Put up your hands and we lead you through a confession prayer. Say, I want Jesus today. I see hands there. Put up. I see hands there. Come on, come. Heaven is taking a party right now. you are Lord and from today I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at live stream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.